You know, I, 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 I want to touch on something that I think was, it, it, it's an incredible gem in your story. And um, I heard you talk about it before. I actually yeah. heard you talk about it on Solange album, yeah. but I didn't know who you was talking about. And when yeah. I watched the documentary, it was the one part where you start in the bubble, you moving now. Yes. After all of the failing, the failing, the failing, now starting to move. Jimmy yeah. Iovine gives you a meeting. Yeah. Offers you a million dollars. Yes. And you leave the meeting and never come back. Now, yeah. there's two things I need you to speak on. Number one, knowing your worth. Even yeah. when your bank account don't reflect it at the moment, yeah. but knowing yeah. your worth, and number two, you have a quote that I love, never take a deal when you're desperate. Yeah. Can you talk on both of those things. Yeah, so um, no deal is too big to where you can't walk away from it. Because people always say, you know, this deal is too big. Nah, no deal is too big to walk away. When I went into that office and I realized, and education is so important because I pray for wisdom. I don't pray for money. When I walked into that meeting, I only had $500 in my pocket. And the guy just offered me a million dollars. And I had to realize that this guy offered me a million dollars. What am I really worth? 10, 20, 30, 40? So you have to know your value. You have to know your worth. And uh, that was probably the best deal I ever turned down because I ended up making Forbes top 40 under 40 after that. Mm -hmm. Walking away from that deal. So imagine if I would have took that deal, I only, I only would have had a million. I, I would have been a millionaire, but that would probably have been the only money I make because education is so important. When I read that contract, I didn't think, maybe he didn't think that I, that I was that educated because of my music. So you can't judge a book by its cover. It's probably one of the most educated guys in the business. Uh, went to University of Houston. I was an A student in high school. Uh, so as soon as I read the deal, it said, seven years, I can't use my name. I don't own none of the rights. That right there was it for me. It's like, this million dollars, I need this million dollars. But I started realizing my grandfather told me a long time, never do a deal when you're desperate. And, and I was desperate. That's good advice, by the way. Your, your grandpa yeah. gave you some great advice. Yeah. Yes, and, and I started thinking about that in the meeting. And I said, uh, I'm going to just go back home. And the guy told me, you'll never get a deal in this town. I said, well, I ain't really looking for no deal. I'm looking for somebody to pack fair. I'm looking for a partner. And uh, I left. And the rest was history. Uh, I how, ended up. How hard was it for you? You just said, which I didn't know, you have five hundred dollars in your yes. pocket. I don't know if that was to your name or if it was just in your <laughs> actual pocket. Yeah, I mean, that was in my pocket, but that was like as real as it get. I didn't have a lot of money at the time. Um, okay, so, but how hard? Because a million dollars to somebody, to some yeah. kid out there. I mean, having a check in my hand, the, the, the guy gave me the check already signed. Oh, so, so you actually had the check? I had the check. I had the check. I'm that must have been a long check. elevated down. Yeah, no, nah, it, was, it was tough. You know, like, you know what's right, but you know you need the money. Uh-huh. And it's like, man, I could take this money and I could do this and that with it, but I'm like, but then I'm selling my soul. And it's not worth it. Which a lot of people say, well, you know, that's seven years. You know, after the contract up, you can move on. I'm like, no, that's seven years of me being an entrepreneur and all the other things that I could do with my life, all the other uh, creative things that I can't create, I would not have an opportunity to do that now. And I watch a lot of artists they fight in those battles. Even today with these 360 deals, they sign these multi-million uh, dollar deals, but it also tie their lives up. Mm -hmm. Where 
they can't do nothing now and they get shelved, their music is shelved and the record companies put their music out when they want to. And I'm just blessed to be able to, one, put my trust and faith in God and have an education to go with it and to have uh, street credibility to go with it too. Because I think that's what made me dangerous that I was already no knew what was going on on the streets and I could handle myself on the streets and then to be educated and be able to articulate in a corporate meeting and um, just having value and, and integrity. I think that made, made me the most dangerous guy in the music industry and, uh, and having God and, and knowing that I put my trust and faith in him and not in man. I think it made me, it made me different because uh, I had no ego, never had an ego. And um, I'm all about doing the right thing. But by me growing up on the streets, I'm like, they knew that I was a different breed, but I've always treated people the way they treat me. And people don't realize your word is everything. Uh, I've always kept my word and I've always given respect and demand that same thing back from somebody else. And I think that's just the way I live because there's a lot of people with money, but no respect. Correct. And, and you can't buy love. People realize you could buy pleasure, but you can't buy love. I don't care how much money you have. Correct. And, uh, and I think those are things that made me different from a lot of the moguls and a lot of people in the industry. But it also, it put me in a place by myself because I never really had a lot of friends in the industry. So people always ask me all the time, but P, how come you don't have a lot of friends in the industry? Because I think in the end, those friends end up being enemies. And so I've always read uh, the, the book of war, uh, a good soldier prepared for war in time of peace. And I don't mind being with my self and my family instead of, just living for a party or living to play or living to show people what I have. I could jump in a Rolls Royce or I could ride in a Dodge truck. It don't show who I am. And I learned that from Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett could ride around in a Honda. That don't, he know what he has in the bank. There you go. So even with me, you know, I done drove by some people in Rolls Royces and I'm in my truck and I know these guys don't have what I have. Mm -hmm. You know, a car don't make me, material don't make me. I realize all this is temporary anyway, and we can't take this with us. Um, I watched the guy who created Apple, the iPhones. When he passed, his wife on a boat with somebody else. So this is all temporary success. Some people don't even get a chance to enjoy That's right. the labor. And so I'm just thankful, man, with everything that's going on with COVID-19 and people are dying, we're losing so many great people. I'm saying time is more important than money. Well, I want to touch on you family. said earlier. I'm, I'm sorry, Pete. I'm sorry. Yeah. So time you can't get back. Any entrepreneur that's listening and watching this, time is more important than money. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.